Okay, so uh, this video lecture is for our module 17 entitled Basic Approaches to the Audit of the CIS Environment. Okay, for the overview, so we will be include, uh, including to discuss uh, the scope of the audit in a CIS environment as well as the use of the computer-assisted audit techniques to aid the auditor in assessing and gathering of the sufficient appropriate audit evidences. For the learning outcomes, so at the end of this module, you will be able to understand the significant effects of CIS in the scope of the audit, as well as the computer-assisted audit techniques. Okay, so for the contents, so we have two uh, major topics, uh, CIS in the scope of uh, the audit or its effect, and uh, the computer-assisted audit techniques, so the different uh, or the common uh, types of um, computer-assisted uh, audit techniques that is being used by the auditor. Okay, so to start with, let us discuss about the effects of the CIS in the scope of the audit. So the overall objective and scope of an audit, uh, normally this do, uh, does not change, okay? Um, especially when a client possess its data using a CIS. So basically, uh, in general, audit objective is to gather uh, sufficient appropriate audit evidences so that the auditor will have uh, its proof and support to his uh, audit conclusion about the fairness of the uh, presentation and uh, preparation of the financial statements of the client. Okay, so this objective and scope do not change. Okay, so the use of computer, however, will have the effect on the processing, storage, and communication of the financial information. And this may effect, affect also the internal control systems that is uh, employed or uh, established and maintained by the entity in the following areas okay so basically um there is uh, some differences between the manual or the usual uh, audit uh when an entity do not use the computer okay and when an entity is using the computer in processing storing and um preparing their financial information so first, the auditor's procedure in obtaining a sufficient understanding of the system of the internal control. So basically, internal controls in ICIS is quite different from that of uh, the manual system. So the auditor in this case should have the understanding of uh, how uh, the, the internal control is um, maintained and uh established as well as followed okay by the entity so this is very important so that the auditor will know if the internal control indeed will detect um correct and uh prevent the misstatements okay another change is um, on the risk of material misstatement to which the auditor arrive at the risk assessment. So in this case, uh, again, he will base this risk assessment on the status of the internal control as well as the other uh, factors that uh, the auditor think is important okay, in the assessment of risk. And another is the auditor's design and performance of the test of controls okay, as well as the substantive procedures which he thinks is appropriate to meet the audit objectives in the case of a CIS environment. Okay, so those are uh, the different areas where the auditor will expect some changes uh, or difference between the manual and um, an entity which uses computer in the processing, maintaining, and preparing or storing their financial information. Another is uh, sufficient knowledge also of the CIS is needed. So this is very important for the auditor uh, because he has to plan, direct, and supervise, and also review the work that he is going to perform and make sure that these procedures are um, appropriate okay, in the CIS environment in obtaining uh, sufficient appropriate audit evidences. 
So, the specialized uh, CIS skills may also be required okay, of the auditor, particularly in the following areas. So, he has to obtain sufficient understanding of the internal control uh, that is part or covered in the CIS environment. So, we have mentioned this in the previous uh, slides. Okay, where in this case, the auditor should have uh, the understanding of such. That's why in our previous module, you, ha you have um, noticed that uh, there was an introduction about uh, the basic uh, concepts in computer. Okay, so this is what the auditor should also know about the entity. Another is uh, he should determine the effect okay, of the CIS environment on the assessment of the overall risk okay, at the assertion level. Okay, because in this case, there are uh, risks also that is associated uh, when in when an entity okay, uses computer. So we mentioned this like uh, the absence or lack of audit trail and so on, okay, or authorization of uh, the transactions and the like. Another is designing and performing the appropriate uh, test of control as well as the substantive procedures which are... Um, that which are suited and fit in a CIS environment because the auditor cannot uh, perform the audit procedures that is uh, applicable for manual system in the CIS environment, okay? So if, if specialized skills are needed, so the auditor would seek the assistance of a professional processing uh, such, or possessing such skills, okay? So this is where... Um, the work of the uh, specialist or those who have uh, the technical knowledge okay, about the CIS environment and um, the CIS environment and uh, the computer Okay, as well as the program and the software. Okay, so here the auditor can actually employ the uh, work of an expert. Okay, because technical terms and uh, conditions exist in a CIS environment, which are or may, which may be very difficult for the auditor to understand deeply. So that's why he needs to work with the expert. So, in determining whether a specialized CIS skills are needed okay, to design and perform the audit, so the following factors should be considered by the auditor. First, uh, if the entity systems and CIS controls are complicated, which means to say that uh, a basic or uh, just a mere understanding of their uh, internal controls uh, will not uh, supplement okay or will not help the auditor especially in planning and performing the audit procedures because uh, it has many technicalities which needs an expert for uh, which need an expert okay who can um, uh, mediate okay and aid the auditor in understanding and uh, in uh, planning if such audit procedure will be effective in gathering the uh, evidences. Another is the significant changes made to existing systems or implementation of new systems. So in this case, again, uh, the audit, since the auditor is not an expert in this field, so he has to work with someone who has the knowledge about it okay, and ask if um, how it, it was uh, designed okay, for him to be able to determine the appropriate audit procedures to be performed. Next is the extent to which data is shared among the systems. So how the, the information is shared and uh, communicated as well as the process okay, and the preparation and the presentation of such. Okay. Another is uh, the extent also of the entity's participation in e-commerce. Okay, so because uh, in this case, it will have a great amount of um, contribution on the financial data of the entity. Okay, because here, uh, sales 
and other transactions normally occurs. Okay, so this is very important for the auditor also to understand. And if such needs uh, the help of the expert, in which case technicalities exist, then he may um, need to work with the expert. So another is the entity's use of emerging technologies. Okay, so of course, if the entity especially is very up to date when it comes to its uh, application of the computer system and program or software, so here the auditor really needs to um, understand as well. And if he is not able to uh, um, to uh, understand it very well. So again, uh, he will need to have the, the help of an expert. Okay, so those are the different uh, factors that the auditor should consider in uh, determining whether a specialized CIS, CIS skills are needed. Okay, so in connection with our discussion about the effects of uh, CIS in the audit or the scope of the audit. So the next uh, or the subtopic under it is the significant complexities of the CIS activities. Okay. So here, of course, the auditor should, should understand the significance and complexity of the CIS activities. Okay, again, because the purpose of this is so that the auditor will know how to uh, gather the audit evidences and if uh, and what appropriate audit procedures are needed to be applied. So when we say significance, so normally this relates to the materiality of the financial statement assertions affected by the computer processing, meaning uh, in using the computer, in the processing of the financial data, it has a uh, huge part in it. Okay, when uh, it is used, it has or it may affect the result of the output. So that's why um, the auditor should be very careful in uh, understanding also and in applying the audit procedures. Okay, for these activities. So this understanding would normally include matters such as um, the significance and complexity of the computer processing in each uh, significant accounting application because this is where the transactions uh, were, uh, will be recorded and processed and turned into reports such as our financial statements. Okay, so meaning here, um, if there is is any complexity so most probably um, misstatements may exist like uh, it may be caused by some errors in the inputs or fraud if that is intentional okay another is an application may be considered to be complex when the volume of transactions is uh, very difficult to identify and if there are errors um, it is also difficult to correct it in the processing okay so that's what we mean by complicated uh, application because there are a lot of transactions that takes place and if there are any errors that may have uh, occurred it is very difficult to be identified because uh, this were uh, this occurred together with other uh, transactions, okay. So may probably um, they would think that uh, all of them were processed correctly and uh, the input are accurate. And in fact, there there is a single or a few transactions which were recorded incorrectly. Okay, so this is where complexity takes place. And misstatement may uh, exist okay, in the output 
of such processing. Another is when the computer automatically generates material transactions or entry directly to the to another application. So normally, if the entity is using a software or program, so this is what happens. So this, uh, there, there is only, or the employee needs only to uh, click once, and then the rest of the parts of the report or the processing will also be uh, updated or changed. Okay. So in this case, if there are a lot of transactions and um, they were processed all together, so it's very difficult okay, for it to be identified. So it will lead to misstatement later on. Another is when the computer performs complicated computations of the financial information and automatically uh, the computer generates material transactions or entries that cannot be validated independently so of course because of um, the automation of the processing so it's very hard and audit trail is uh, eliminated so that's why a uh, misstatement may occur that may not be corrected or identified so that's uh, what the auditor should make sure that he will detect such okay Another is uh, when the transactions are exchanged electronically with other organizations. So this is what we call electronic, electronic data intercha intercharge or EDI systems. Uh, this is without manual review for propriety or reasonableness. So again, because uh, the transactions were um, or took place and recorded automatically by the computer itself. Another, uh, so the understanding would also include uh, the organizational structure of the client CIS activities as well as the extent of the concentration or distribution of the computer processing throughout the entity. So how or who are the persons involved and if their responsibilities and duties do not overlap or there is uh, segregation of duties to avoid any uh, possible fraud okay, that may exist. And lastly is the availability of data. So source documents, uh, certain computer files, and other evidence that may be required by the auditor may exist for only a short period or only a machine-readable form. So this is uh, normally what happens in a CIS environment or if the entity is using computer and processing their information. So again, uh, audit trail and no uh, do source documents exists. So that's very hard for them, uh, for the entity themselves to detect if there are any errors that uh, occurred. So again, the auditor in this case should detect it because it will lead to misstatements. Okay, so those are uh, the significant complexities of CIS activities because of the use of computer. So in this case, uh, using the computer is efficient okay, and make, it, it makes the processing faster. However, because of the complexities of it, uh, it may uh, also result into misstatements. Okay, so we will continue with the next subtopic, the procedures in reviewing the CIS general and application control. So actually, uh, we have uh, discussed this in the previous uh, module, but in this case, um, this is more specific, okay? But uh, it is just, uh, uh, we will look into the CIS uh, environment okay, and how the auditor should uh, consider okay, such uh, controls. So the auditor should consider how the CIS general controls affect the applications uh, significant, which are significant to the audit. So accordingly, uh, it may be more efficient to review okay, the design of the entity's general controls before reviewing the application control. Okay, so this is the premise. Okay, before the auditor should. Uh, perform okay, the next uh, task in understanding the procedures okay, of such control. So control over input processing 
uh, data files and output may be carried out in the C by the CIS personnel. So, by users also of the system, by a separate control group, or it may be programmed into the application software itself. So, this is how um, controls or internal controls in a CIS environment can be uh, ap applied. Okay. So, CIS application controls, which the auditor may wish to test, this includes manual controls that is exercised by the user, controls over the system output, and the program control procedures. So, these are uh, the concern of the auditor okay, on how the entity was able to apply okay, such controls in their CIS activities. So, the CIS general controls may have a pervasive effect on the processing of the transaction in application systems. So, if these controls are not effective, so prep, uh, most likely there is a risk of misstatement that will occur and it may be undetected in the application system. So, this is uh, the problem okay, if such controls are ineffective. Okay. So, it will have the effect on the application control. So, thus, weaknesses in CIS general controls may preclude the auditor from testing certain CIS application. Uh, nevertheless, manual procedures exercised by users may provide effective control. So, it will depend on the situation and the assessment of the auditor later on. Okay. So, in this case, in reviewing again, the CIS general and application controls, it is very important to note that the auditor should first understand the general application because whatever uh, may be the status of the general application may also affect the uh, so general control, I mean, may also affect the application controls. So that's how uh, the auditor should do uh, in understanding and reviewing these internal controls in the CIS activities of the entity.